This lesson is on the side effects of levothyroxine, which is also known as Synthroid. So we're going to talk about some important side effects caused by this medication and also some very important ones later on. So stay tuned for those. So this medication is used to treat hypothyroidism, which is a low functioning thyroid. So the thyroid is a gland in the neck and it's going to be responsible for creating thyroid hormones. We'll talk about that here in a moment. And levothyroxine or synthroid is synthetic thyroxine or T4, which is one of the thyroid hormones produced by the thyroid gland. So it acts exactly like T4. T4 is less active. It's a less active form of thyroid hormone. You can think of it as a reservoir form of thyroid hormone that gets converted to what we call T3 or triiodothyronine. This is the active form. Once it's converted into T3, it leads to activation of thyroid receptors inside cells. So again, the thyroid gland produces T4 and T3, and because we're using synthetic form of thyroxine, we're going to get thyroxine, which can be converted into T3, and these are going to lead to particular effects in the body, including the three M's, metabolism, movement, and mentation. All of this is going to occur with regards to the side effects of this medication. So we're not going to talk about the side effects of low levothyroxine because it's not really a side effect of levothyroxine itself. It's more symptoms of hypothyroidism that are not being treated. So those can include cold intolerance, weight gain, fatigue, depression, etc. So we're going to focus mostly on the side effects of levothyroxine itself, which is often going to be due to too high of a dose of this medication. And it essentially leads to signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism or high functioning thyroid. So it's going to have a lot of overlap and there's going to be certain signs and symptoms that can occur, especially with level thyroxine. So we'll talk about those as we go through this lesson. And a lot of times this can be due to dosing. It's important to have your TSH and thyroid hormones checked when you're taking this medication. It's also important to utilize this at the same time per day and on an empty stomach, usually 30 to 60 minutes before eating. Before we talk about those side effects, let's discuss quickly how Synthroid or Levothyroxine functions to be converted into triiodothyronine. So when you've consumed this medication, again on an empty stomach, it's going to be absorbed into the bloodstream. And as it travels through the blood, it's going to go to certain tissues and organs. And one of those organs is the liver. And this is where the main location of what we call deiodination occurs. And deiodination is going to be a removal of one of the iodine atoms. And what this does is it produces triiodothyronine or T3, the active form of thyroid hormone. So that's essentially what T3 is. It is T4 minus one of the iodine atoms. And there's going to be a, a variable half-life with Synthroid, and it all has to do with how much thyroid hormone you already have. So if you have very, very severe hypothyroidism, you're going to have a longer half-life. It's going to stay in your system longer. If you have hyperthyroidism, if you're taking too much Synthroid, for instance, then it's going to have a shorter half-life. So the half-life does vary anywhere between three to 10 days. So this is how long it takes for half of the medication to be essentially removed from the body. Now let's talk about the side effects of levothyroxine or Synthroid. So some of the main ones can include anxiety. So if you start to have a bit too high of a dose of levothyroxine, you can start to have a little bit of feeling on the edge, a little bit of anxiety or nervousness. And this may be due to itself increased mentation. We talked about that being one of the three M's. So feeling very nervous or nervous even slightly can be very common for patients. Another one is tremulousness. So tremulousness is simply tremor. So it's increased movements. Again, that's one of the three M's. So feeling shaky, having hand tremors, and this can also be related to anxiety as well. Some others include heat intolerance. So heat intolerance is actually very common. You often feel too warm or too hot. And in some cases, patients, their temperature can actually increase and it can cause a fever in some cases. Another one is sweating. So sweating goes along with this heat intolerance. It's common and occurs with that heat intolerance, as we talked about before. And it's often can be excessive sweating or more sweating than is usual for the patient. We can also see insomnia occurring with levothyroxine use as well, especially with doses that are too high for the patient. 
So difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep, or early morning awakenings can be common. This can be related to the tremors. It can be related to anxiety. You just feel a bit more jittery. It's hard to fall asleep because of that. And ultimately, this can lead to fatigue. So patients just don't get a good sleep. Next day, they feel quite tired. Bowel habit changes are also another side effect of levothyroxine use. So these include increased frequency and decreased consistency of stool. So diarrhea. Diarrhea is more likely to occur in patients taking a bit too high of a dose of levothyroxine. We can also have abdominal cramps along with this. And again, this is due to increased metabolism, but also increased gastrointestinal motility. We can also see weight loss occurring in some patients as well. So maybe mild to moderate weight loss. This is again due to increased metabolism. Now, if you're having weight gain, especially if you're having consistent weight gain when on levothyroxine, you may be taking too low of a dose. So that could occur in some patients. Weight loss is also going to be related to increased frequency of diarrhea as well. Appetite changes can also occur with levothyroxine use. So you can actually have an increased appetite despite the weight loss. So this can occur. This is also due to increased metabolism. We can also get what we call a globus sensation. Now a globus sensation is where you feel like there's something in the back of your throat, but there really isn't. This is a kind of odd feeling. You feel like there's something in your throat, but there really isn't. And this globus sensation may be related to changes in thyroid activity that may be occurring due to that exogenous thyroid hormone you're taking. So because you're taking exogenous thyroid hormone, your thyroid gland doesn't have to produce as much thyroid hormone as it used to. So there could be some relation here. And another potential side effect is emotional liability, which is increases in emotional changes. There could be quick changes to feelings, so you could maybe feel quite happy, or then you could feel quite sad, or you could be quick-tempered. So these may occur with some patients taking too high of a dose of levothyroxine. Another one is hair loss. So hair thinning, there could be outright alopecia where there's complete hair loss. Sometimes it's temporary, sometimes it is more longer-lasting. It's generally non-specific pattern, so it's not going to be a particular male pattern, baldness pattern, for instance. And it's going to be due to increased hair turnover. Now, another potential side effect is headache. So headaches may occur with levothyroxine use. And there are going to be different types of headaches that can occur depending on the patient. So sometimes they can be tension-type headaches where they're just a bilateral or both sides of the head kind of band-like pain around the head. Or it could be migraine-like headaches where it's unilateral or one-sided kind of pounding headache that often occurs with other symptoms like light sensitivity, for instance. We can also see menstrual irregularity with some patients taking levothyroxine. So the thyroid hormone itself can affect how your other hormones act. Now, this can end up leading to issues with frequency of menstrual cycles. So you can have a decrease in frequency of menstrual cycles. So you can have either hypomenorrhea or amenorrhea. Hypomenorrhea is where you're still having your periods, but you're having them less frequently. Amenorrhea is when you have no periods for a number of many months. And this goes along with infertility. So reduced fertility or infertility can occur due to N ovulation, which is no ovulation of an egg. And this is the reason why we can see some of these issues with the menstrual cycles as well. And we can also have important findings like bone mineral density changes with levothyroxine use, especially long-term use. So this can end up causing a decrease in your overall bone mineral density. So this can increase your risk for osteopenia and osteoporosis. So again, this is especially important when you have too high of a dose of levothyroxine for long periods of time. And tachycardia is also another potential side effect as well. So tachycardia is going to be a heart rate greater than 100 beats per minute. And you may also have some other arrhythmias that go along with it. So some heart palpitations can occur. And hypertension can also occur with levothyroxine use. This is an increase in blood pressure. So depending on the guidelines you're using, you could have a higher blood pressure of greater than 130 over 90. But generally, we're going to have a particular type of high blood pressure with either hyperthyroidism or having too much levothyroxine. And that is going to be a hypertension with a widened pulse pressure, meaning that you're going to have the top number, the systolic number going up. It's going to be high, but you're going to have a normal diastolic number. It could be still around 80 or even lower. So you could have 140, 150, 160, but you can still have it over 80 or even lower than that. So that gap between the top number or the systolic number and the bottom number or the diastolic number widens. 
And then there's some other cardiovascular findings as well, including an increased risk of atrial fibrillation, angina pectoris, so chest pain, dyspnea or shortness of breath, and some rare cases of congestive heart failure. And again, these cardiovascular risks are going to be due to taking too high of a dose of levothyroxine. So that's why it's very important to make sure you're taking a good, adequate dose, not too little, not too much. So these are the side effects of levothyroxine. If you want more information on other conditions like hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism, please check my lessons on those topics. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Please also consider joining as a member for members-only content. Take care, and I hope to see you again soon.